Welcome in you cheap beggars to Discount, the bargain bin gaming podcast hosted by three hosts so cheap they might be baby chocobos. Uh, I am your host Josh and plug in to player two. I'm Darren. Hello. And hoping the Pokemon Presents makes furries canon. <laughs> I can't. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's been working hard on these this morning. That was really good. That-, that-, that one took me like half an hour on the train this morning. That really threw me off guard then. That was awesome. That's the plan. Really good. Uh, yeah, and welcome into another episode of Discount. Uh, to another Free Plays and Freebies Ooh. episode. This time we're going to be discussing the month of February. 2023, in case you're listening to this in the future. Well, you definitely listen to this in the future. Oh, you're not in the past. past. You're not in the past. Yeah, true. True. Yeah. They could be listening to this. Before we've recorded it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything right. is possible. It, yes, anything is possible. Well, if maybe, just... maybe Anchor invents time travel. Oh, good God. This is horrible. Can you imagine? No, I can't I imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. I can. But before Look, we imagined it. How do yeah. you guys normally have a go at me for derailing the thing at the very beginning? And now here you guys are. Yeah, but our derailings are cute and whimsical. Yours are also, ADHD you, rants. You know it's meant to go and you derail it. I don't know what it's meant to be. Oh, I don't know. I We're just here to react. Tell me what's next. We're the Muppets on the balcony. You, are, just like, you are Muppets. I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> not arguing that. So yes, welcome into another episode um, of Discount, where we're going to be discussing all things gaming in February, really, focusing on some news, what we've been playing, and most importantly, I suppose, the PlayStation Plus lineup for February 23. Um, and that's that's what we're doing this this episode, so thank you for coming along, hopefully you enjoy it, we'll see what goes on, who cares, Ooh. move on, let's get going, yeah. let's talk about news, so what's been going on this month news. in gaming? News. Yeah. I saw someone that told me that news was an acronym for... Um, News, entertainment, weather, and sport, but then news can't be the first yeah. letter of news. I think, I think it's really oh. funny that Arachnum involves itself. <laughs> <laughs> Is that recursive? <laughs> like news, entertainment, weather, sports, entertainment, do weather, sports, sports, it keeps going deeper. Forever and ever, yeah. 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 I like that. But, do, you, do you guys, like, outside of gaming news, this is a really off topic thing, I do apologise, yeah, but um, yeah. do you guys actually, like, watch the news or no. read the news or anything? I don't, because I think it's depressing. No, yeah, I'm fucking sad. But enough. yeah, my parents watch it, like, every morning. Morning, and every morning I'm like, why are you watching this? This is so depressing. No, I just get updates of important stuff, like, you know, a cat's made friends with a duck. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. That's important news. That is important news. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I agree. But, you know, there is quite a bit of important news within gaming, I suppose, yes. as mm-hmm. well. Um, so I'm going to start off with some sad news that um, I don't think... Oh, good. Really <laughs> we just well. said the news is depressing, it and is. we're going to start off with some depressing news. It is. Um, he says, but he can't actually find what he had as the depressing news. So he won't be. He won't uh, be doing it that way. What a fucking mess this is going turning out to be. Shall I jump in with more sad news? Yeah, you start jumping with some oh, sad uh, news. Okay. Guys, Knockout City's dying. No, uh, Knockout City's yeah. genuinely really sad. <laughs> I love that game. You guys have been playing this for a little, for a couple of so like I, weeks now, right? I first brought this up, uh, brought up Knockout City on week five of our first season, which was right. funny because it was the sports episode, and I had played it because it was free on EA Play, and I went, "This is kind of fun." It was I free on PS Plus, wasn't it? It was free on PS Plus after that, right? Okay, which is why I've played both four and five. Sadly, because it means I have trophies I won't get. Right. Okay. Um, but I'm still playing it. Knockout City is fucking great fun, and it's it's closing. It changed like ownership three times, I think. So it was yeah. originally the studio was under EA. Mm-hmm. They then self published it for I think seasons five and six and seven, maybe. And then they got moved to, over to Epic. Didn't yeah, they, they got yeah. sort of put under Epic then, who are now closing the service. Because it's Epic, and Epic just make a fucking mess of every game yeah. they touch. Yeah. Fall Guys, absolute mess now. Yeah. You know, like any game they touch, apart from Fortnite, which is their money making cash cow, they just make a mess of. But their store's pretty good because they give you a bunch of free stuff every week. Yeah, so they're, right. pro- they're probably bad for publishers, but they're okay yeah. for us. But we're now uh, locked back into Knockout City because we have four months to get the rest of the trophies. Yeah, mm-hmm. and these trophies are a bit of a nightmare. And I think because we didn't migrate properly, so they made you migrate your account across, but they didn't give anyone like an email notification or anything like yeah. that. It just went, if you're playing the game, you know you need to migrate so it. And they, you- they put out a tweet at the end of September 2022 <laughs> and went, migrate your account by January 2023. 20- or all your stuff will be gone. I think we tuned in a week later. Yeah. Oh my god. I saw the tweet a week after that, but they were like, contact us and we can move it over. So, right. we, so we got all our stuff back, but we're really far behind on like 
get a certain amount of XP because it's reset all yeah. the work we've D- done. Different things seem to have been reset. Like all my assists and ultimate throws and everything are still fine, but my XP is really reset. Mm. So it's weird, like half and half. But yeah, it, we dropped off over a bit, but that's yeah. a fucking fun game. Yeah, it's, it. it's gonna be, it's gonna be a sad thing to say see go sort of. Yeah. I mean, it's a good one to just add in the rotation of games to play. It's a small amount. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You run around playing dodgeball. So if you don't know, it's normally like a three v three dodgeball with special dodgeballs, and you can catch and throw. Yeah. It's just first. There's attempt. nothing quite like it. No, um, and it's a lot more skill based than you'd imagine. The mm. amount I'm being absolutely beamed constantly at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we go between. Um, having a fairly competitive game and eating all of the shit yes. mm. from game to game because yeah. people have been playing it the whole time and I'll it does disgusting. seem to be like a little bit of a theme that you get really unique concepts for multiplayer games and then they get taken over by big corporations, watered down and eventually shut. Like that, that definitely is a theme for the last year or so, I feel. I'll, I'll give credit to uh, Knockout City for it started as a 3v3 dodgeball game and has persisted to just be that for like three years. Yeah. I don't know if it that is its problem, mm. is that it is exactly what it is. It's it's fucking fun. Though. It's done better than a lot of other games that are similar it's a similar vein, like you know, Destruction All Stars, that died very quickly, Nobody didn't it? Cared, yeah. But like there's a few others that have come out and they've been like these sort of like concept multiplayer games are a bit different. Like the only one that sort of stood the test of time, I, s- I suppose, is probably Splatoon. Yeah. As a different one, but that's because it's a Nintendo property and they expect it to be a little weird and a little mm. more kid friendly. Yeah. So who knows? Um, yeah, but yeah, it's a fun game. But I was just—that's. I remember what my sad news was. Okay. Um, uh, Toru Okada has passed away. If you don't know who that is, he's the person who created the sound for the original PlayStation. Oh, yeah. So he passed oh, away. Oh no, um, that is sad. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, that was what. Um, yes, well, point of recording on the 22nd, uh, 22nd of Feb. Yeah, oh my so god. That... So, yeah. yeah. We all boot up our PlayStations and saw Yeah. yeah That's such a nostalgic sound as well. It's so good. It's... I get goosebumps literally every time. It is it's a beautiful so sound. It's so iconic, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's just one of those sounds you just know exactly what it is. It's the same, but then again, for me, PlayStation 2 loading screen, which is that sort of. Yeah. With that space noise. And- That's what I kind of loved about um, when I played Astro Bot when we first got the PS5. Um, I absolutely loved going back through like all the old, like the fact that you could pick up like memory cards and you went through all the old, yeah, old music and the loading screens and stuff. It was so good. I loved it. Yeah, because you had one, two, three, and four, then you had all four iterations. Yeah, of, of yeah, yeah. A three, I don't remember a sound for three, but I didn't have a PlayStation 3. I, I went to 360, I, I, I jumped ship. Mm. But, and four, I don't remember anything iconic. The only thing with five as well now is just the beep of you starting up, which yeah. isn't really yeah. a sound thing. Beep. You're like, cool, PS5's I, loading up. I have more memory of the visual of PS5 than the sound. Yeah. And it's like the five sunlight the coming down, the five. Oh, five. the sunlight coming down on mm. that opening screen, I remember. Yeah. The only thing that I really have a memory about sound wise with PS4 is the fact that before I got the PS5, mine sounded like a fucking jet <laughs> yeah. taken off in my room and because it was so old and it had been fair, yeah. fair play. There was nothing wrong with it. it. It still works. It's still good. But my God, is it loud? Yeah. I remember the fat PS3. It sounded like it should have had a countdown. We're, we're oh my still, God. We yeah. yeah. We still use that one. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's ready to explode. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the fat PS3. Yes. Um, I remember yeah, yeah. controversially. Yeah. My ex boyfriend had a really fat PS3. It's like the big fat ones. And that thing was so fucking loud. Oh my god. Like you were trying to have a conversation, and I'm deaf anyway. And to be fair, you, you know, should, it's, you're it's doing, all right. You're doing a good because of being deaf right I don't, now. I don't, I don't really want to, you know, whatever. What do you mean? You, Darren said, oh, those really fat PS3s, they sound so loud, they're the loudest of them. And you go, you know those fat PS3s? They're, they were so loud, I basically. Oh, I thought, I thought you were talking about the fat PS4, and you were like, because you were like, we've, we've got one of those. We don't have a PS3. We do have a PS3. No, we don't. What have we been playing the PS3 games on then? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> So another thing about the fat PS3, that thing launched with fucking sixty gigs of hard drive space, and that was enough. Yeah, what happened. Yeah, can't even fit a game on there now. I mean, I'm waiting to finish. Well, one of the games we might discuss in this episode to remove it to put a different game we're going to discuss in this episode yeah. on there mm. because they both require eighty odd gigs. Yeah, so you could cable three PS3s together and put one more fair on it. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably share that. It's probably space. still too small because if you have to update it, you need to like, double the I space. I really have to count it up. So I'm like, you could do it with two, but no. You'd have to take like half the game out. 
Yeah. You could just throw up it on three without an update. That's mm. insane. What, you know what's a weird question, right? Oh, it's not a weird question. It's a nice question. But what is the first game that comes to your head when you think about playing a PS1? Uh, Spyro. Spyro. For me, it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Yeah. Uh, now, see, for me, it's really random, right? Because I, I played Spyro, I played, my, I, like, I talk about all the ones that I used to play all the time. The first one that comes into my head is fucking Ready to Rumble Boxing. Nice. Oh, my God. I spent way too much time on that as a kid. And the, the songs, now and again, do, like, a Rolodex in my head of stupid boxing songs that still, like, intrude I my thoughts my, to this day. Yeah, the original Digimon World. Mm. Oh yeah, I like I like that one too. Good, well, the original Ninja that. Gaiden, one of those because I used was Shenmue Ninja Assassin. Was that what it was called? No, it wasn't Shenmue. What was it? I can't remember. I have to find out. Yeah. But it was I had a, I had one of those. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? PS One. Your PS ones, uh, the hacked ones, what are they called? Cracked, cracked ones. Right. Mm. So I had all like copies on like tiny discs. Yeah. So they were just like written on them. Yeah. So I'm trying to come remember the dates. So the disc <gasps> no, the other one that gets me as well is the original <laughs> like. <laughs> Alone in the Dark series. I had that one. That was cool. Mm. Well, you're talking of Alone in the Dark and spooky games. Mm. I think there's some news that you want to talk about in there, Karis. Yes! <laughs> okay, so um, naturally, spooky games would be mine. Um, but it came out earlier this week, I think like February 21st-ish, that um, Blumhouse, which is the um, production company that's kind of responsible for things like um, Paranormal Activity, Get Out, they recently released it's James, Megan. It's James Wan's yeah. company, isn't it? Um, are branching out to a new division, um, Blumhouse Games, and they're doing a bunch of well the 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 concept is that they're going to do original horror themed games for console pc and mobile as well oh, yeah. which i'm a little bit well, mobile makes sense i mean it's easier to make a horror themed mobile game than anything else to make a bunch of money quickly yeah you just put yeah stuff yeah on there, which is like a candy crush clone essentially yeah. with horror background i'd also think you'd do a really cool mobile one if you used uh, like augmented reality and you went yeah. around your house and they could, like <gasps> shit in the corner you know i never thought about that that's cool like, po- like pokemon let's yeah. go yeah yeah pokemon, what's it let's go pokemon that's like pokemon, pokemon go, go. Yeah. and yeah just walk around and you have to like just spooky shit you have to run from spooky shit instead yeah that'd be cool i don't think i would be able to play that because like, i'm a uh, pussy like but... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they've said basically as well that um they're basically going to be acting as like a publisher so they're not going to be coming up with these concepts themselves they're going to um act as a publisher for um indie developers uh on projects with budgets below 10 million so they're essentially just looking to publish indie horror games um which i really like i think that's going to be sick sounds sounds a bit like horror devolver that's yeah, what Devolver do is publish all the indie shit. No, yeah. now I understand that they're looking just to publish. It's, I'm a bit more excited for it because when I thought they were going to be like, oh, we're going to create it, I was like, you don't, you don't want people who know how films work to then just try and make games. It's the same way we don't want people who like. So you get heavy drink. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. but it, but it's more. I mean, more like you know, people who are film companies trying to turn games into films yeah. tend to make a real mess of it. I feel mm. like the other way around would be the same. Like they would go for the wrong elements to yeah. make a game that's exciting well, that's speaking of Alone in the Dark where that movie was bad I think yes it was. it's bad they, almost, almost uh, every film was bad it's made off a <laughs> they, they made films of those <laughs> yeah I didn't know that yeah. I didn't know that I think they're both around as being fucking dog shit yeah, yeah. Well, it's um it's basically <laughs> as well being com- it's being compared to um Anna Poona's expansion cool. into games yeah um, they're looking to do a very similar thing. Annapurna um, published things like Stray, um, Sayonara Wild Heart. I so. always laugh every time like I see Annapurna those. because I never know what Annapurna do. No. So whenever I start a game, it says Annapurna. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. What? <laughs> you said it. How my, did this get here? My brain literally was dead. I was like, what? I don't understand what you. Oh, I played both of those games you yeah. mentioned. <laughs> so Stray, Sayonara, they did um, 12 Minutes, which came out recently. I did another game I played recently. I can't mm. remember what it was, but I definitely started it. It said Annapurna. I was like, what, what are you doing, doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my house. It's Bloomhouse. It really is. It's spooky. <laughs> it's like the fucking, what is it, the Simpsons meme where he throws Barney out the pub and he's fucking behind me. I again. So I start a new game. I'm like, Annapurna again? <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think it's actually cooler that they're just being a publisher. Originally, I thought they were coming up with their own ideas. And I was 
actually quite excited about that but you brought up a really good point about that already um but i do like the fact that they are literally just kind of seeking out indie developers to publish yeah. things i think that's going to be really any, good any way to get more indie publisher like indie games out there I'm all mm. for it. especially bringing them to console because yeah. they feel like a lot get lost in the switch piecing shuffle and they don't ever make it to like a playstation or an xbox mm. so any way to get them out there that's that's great yeah story. and obviously my kind of preferred genre of game is horror i would like the opportunity to see more horror yeah. games so yeah you know spooky cat game win yeah um and they might even show up in some upcoming things like e3 um because that's where they will bring them up even if others are not coming there because yeah. i think e3 have just come up and said that nintendo is not going to be showing up to nintendo like never go to e3 anymore. nintendo aren't going to e3 sony aren't going to e3 i don't think either which is good because they did some directs this month instead yeah which um showcased a lot of what mm. they're doing so we have the nintendo direct early in the month we have the playstation state of play later in the month and the day before this comes out there's another one which is gonna be the pokemon um yeah. Pokemon Presents. Pokemon Presents is what they're calling it. I was going to say, Pokemon... Catch em. I couldn't think of what it's called. But yes, the Nintendo... That's the guy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is, Not anymore. Is this I think where... He's, he's been retired, hasn't he? Has been is this where the rumours have kind of been fueled that the original ones are going to be coming on to the No, I wouldn't say rumours have. I, I've been saying it. <laughs> <laughs> if people... you've gone my hopes up for no fucking reason at <laughs> all, a lot of people are speculating it because they chose in the original one to be like, oh, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance coming on and didn't even mention it. Mm. And then there's a Pokemon event coming up. People are like, uh, they, did they save it back for this? Okay. I think no. No, I, I, it's going to be a long way off. There but, was a joke somebody made that if they re-release the original Pokemon, so nobody's ever going to buy a Pokemon game again. They're just going to buy yeah. I think the uh, the other issue... I mean, you look at them, you go back to them, you'll realise how clunky those originals are. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got the nostalgia, they are clunky, there's, and then you go, oh, actually, the new ones, there's a lot more to them. Funny enough, there's a reason they all got remade. Yeah. 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 Um, would I play them again, though? Fuck yeah, I would. I think Ruby and Sapphire would hold up. I don't know if mm. I played the Game Boy ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as we talk about Nintendo, should we look at the other things they sort of announced? The, yeah. I know Darren was very excited, obviously. Oh, like everything, yeah. Pikmin 4, very, yeah. that's coming out finally. It's been, what, three consoles has been announced on, essentially? Wii U is... No, three came out on the Wii U, and then they sort of went, yeah, four's coming. I thought, that, yeah, because it announced whilst the Wii U was still yeah, running. Yeah. yeah, They went, we're doing four, don't know when. But that should be cool. I'm looking no. forward to that. Um, I'm trying to see what other ones are good there. The exp- um, I like the expansion to um, Dead Cells. The Castlevania one yeah. looks really cool. Cause Dead Cells looks great in itself. Yeah. In Castlevania, um, the worst thing in the world was announced at this one. <laughs> the fucking uh, influencer game. Yeah, fashion dreamer, <laughs> where you become a fashion influencer. You have to <laughs> oh get likes God. on Instagram. <laughs> the thing is, I don't hate the concept. It looked like it had any game in it. Oh, it's just awful. It's not even a game. It it's... just looks like collect the outfits. Collect the outfits. Dress your dollies. Yeah. That yeah. is pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> not interested in that I mean I was just having a little thing about Katamari is going to be interesting which you I'm you like it, yeah. well Darren like um, Splatoon 3 everyone was excited about the expansion for that but again it's if you like Splatoon it's for yeah. you I think I'd like Splatoon if I bothered to play it <laughs> yeah I think the same I think the same I think the big one for it though was the Game Boy announcements hoping that yeah. there'd be more coming for it um the fact that there's a new Professor Layton coming, which Ooh. I think I'm very excited. Yeah, Metroid Prime is being remastered. But speaking of Metroid Prime, <laughs> can we just fucking shadow drop games more often? Yeah, that was my great. favorite thing in the world where they go, "Ah, oh, here's this thing we've been working on. We know you all love it. It's uh, available right now. now." Yeah, and literally, oh God, just I, do more of that. I'm pretty sure they saw a drop in their um, everyone, in their view, everyone left to go and buy the yeah. game. I'm so, gonna fucking buy it. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So it's gonna be love Metro wonderful. Um, and I think the big one though, and I know you're not interested in it, Darren, is the new Bre- uh, Legend of Zelda, which they gave a lot of time to. Yeah. Um, and they. It's funny, they did all this. They did a big announcement at the beginning of their big thing that's coming. Yeah. And then a large thing at the end. This was overall, I think, quite a good direct. It was a good direct. It's quite a good direct. Yeah. And then Sony tries <laughs> to do something similar by going, here's something big at the beginning. Yeah. We're going to drop some interesting title in and then do a big thing at the end. And they just fucking whiffed. I think it was a real... <laughs> it was a lot of nothing. A lot of nothing in this. The big announcement is what next month's PlayStation um, Essentials is going to be, which we won't discuss. They start off strong with the VR 2. So if you like VR stuff, some interesting things yeah, in there. Cool stuff, but I'm not spending £3 million on a VR 2 set. Oh, I might. 
How much is it going for at the moment? Uh, it's like five sixty. I think. Oh, it's more expensive than the console itself. Uh, I I potentially have like back pay on the way. Oh, <laughs> and if I do, I'm just gonna buy the VR. Darren, you're getting married. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Again, this, this will be the lead up to our reports. They were like, it's "Fine." They went, "Oh, here you go. Here's some VR two stuff. Here's some Destiny two stuff." And you're like, "Well, why this, is this in this direct? It's not a Sony exclusive. It's for everything." Then they went, "Here's Chio. We've been working on. We're excited. It's going to be available next month." You're like, "Great." No yeah. one was interested in this. It looks okay. But then they did have some ones that were a bit more, I suppose, interesting in that. Um, I mean, and they also did the Resi 4 remake, which yeah. mm. um, is what everyone was after. Street Fighter 6, which people are excited about. Baldur's yeah. Gate 3, which shocked me that it was coming out in August this year, but I'm not running for mm. it. Yeah. Um, the two that I'm most excited for, strangely enough, is Goodbye Vol- Volcano High, yeah. which I keep forgetting exists. <laughs> I want to know what it is. It's... It looks like, like a rhythm game now. It's like a, it's got a rhythm element. Is it like a dating sim? Oh, is God. you're like dinosaur? <laughs> you're dinosaur humans because yeah. it's like set in like the prehistoric era and all this. Sort oh, of thing. okay. Like they're in a band. Yeah. And it's like high school drama, but they're dinosaurs. Yep. Sweet. Okay. And then humanity, which I just want to know what it is. You're like a little it's, light golden it's dog lemmings. running around with people following you. You have to leave. It just looks like lemmings, it's lemmings. but massive in scope. It yeah. just looks surreal. Um, the most confusing thing, though, because obviously they had Resi 4 there. You go, oh, that's going to be their highlight. They went, no, 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 don't worry. We've got Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which we're going to spend 15 minutes on for no good reason. No. Go on, Darren. This tell me game, why I'm wrong. This game. Um, I don't know what to think about this game. People are either saying it looks fun or it's like absolute dog shit. I come somewhere in the middle. Like, I think I'll buy it two years from now or it'll be on yeah. PS Plus within the year oh, it yeah. and it will be fun just like I, mark. I mean Gotham Knights has come out recently and was yeah. absolutely rinsed because it wasn't yeah. very good Avengers came out absolutely yeah. rinsed <laughs> only good one that's like a collective that has worked has been Guardians of the Galaxy but that's because it's not online and you're yeah. not expected to play that which is what this is doing again Yeah, I, I gotta be honest with you and I mean this is you just hate superheroes I just don't get it. I just don't get it. This is probably like really controversial, but like I, I, don't think I it is anymore. the market is so oversaturated with superhero stuff. I don't want to see forty fucking Marvel films in one year. I don't want to play forty fucking superhero games in one year. It just doesn't make sense to me. I would agree, but I'm addicted to Midnight Suns, so I can't take. That but that, that's like that's that's fine. That's fine, and I get it. But like. Why on earth do I need to see this many? Su- it, 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 it's a money making scheme. There's no actual passion to it. I think, it there, it's, isn't, I think there isn't this one. Stupid. I mean, a lot of people are passionate about their comics and stuff like that, and yeah. they want to see their favourite make it on there. Gotham Knights was a weird one anyway when it came out. Everyone mm. was why Gotham Knights. Oh, yeah, this is, this is no shade so, to people who so love comics. Yeah. Like that, I get. But why production companies need to make 40 iterations of the it's, same fucking film? I don't know. I, I will raise two points in this front. Uh, the first one is that this is off the back of the uh, Batman Arkham games, mm. which yeah. were immensely popular. And they mm-hmm. were great games. They were great games. Also, True. this game has been in development for eight years. Right. When it started, it was right at the fucking crest of mm. that superhero yeah, game. Yeah. And I think that's the big problem as well. Like A lot of people complaining, why are companies still making this type of game? Because it takes so long to make it. It's because they started eight years ago, where that was the up-and-coming right. genre. Mm. So, like People always point back to Destiny. Mm. is where this started and Destiny was such a fucking huge thing every game then wanted to be Destiny That's true, mm. yeah. and what you're now seeing is games that were started to be like Destiny are coming out after that peak has crested and yeah. fallen yeah. Okay. So these games now feel outdated and mm. behind the times and that's the problem. The game takes so long to make now that yeah. it's going to be behind the trend it's chasing. Yeah. It's Especially why, online games. It's why things yeah. like um, Sony exclusive work because Sony exclusives don't feel like they chase a trend. Yeah. They just are what they are, and they just build that. And someone's saying it's why um, fucking FromSoft games have mm. been so successful for so long. Yeah. Because they do not change, and they do not chase anything. They no, just they are, are what they are. Mm. Which They're is like timeless in a way. Get, get me wrong, I think more games need to be more singular in vision. The problem is it's is the buyer's market, yeah. and people exactly want to buy familiar and comfortable, yeah. which is why yeah. you get... 
cod every year. It's wine you get. And I'm not shitting on people who buy cod every year. I'm an, I'm, I'm a yeah. lemming that buy cod every year. And yeah. I will play it because it's easy and familiar. But I love a game that just takes me But then I, I don't think that's so bad because I think that the, I wouldn't care if people were playing superhero games and they were just playing superhero games. But I think as a person who consumes media, media. the fact that the games are then put out there with 40 million films and then you say to somebody I don't like superhero films I just think they're oversaturating people like what you don't know I'm like I, no I don't need to see 40 times the same film and then play a game on it as well in, like fuck in off in the same way I think that reaction was more frequent eight years ago when these things started mm. it's not any now turned around so and this coming is the out thing. and yours is coming towards being the majority well, yeah look, but at the most does... recent, look at the most recent Marvel film look at the new Ant-Man film it's been nobody cares it's, it's, the no. lowest, it's the lowest rated Marvel film yeah. and it was it's joint with Eternals which only came out two years ago yeah like, they're on the down they do you are. think maybe that's why these games feel a little bit dated as well then because the whole so, superhero thing yeah. is becoming dated yeah. thank fuck Oh. No offense. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to have more of it. I know yeah. as long as it's interesting stuff, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Like DC, they do. Hopefully, they'll do something different with it. Mm. Is what I'm hoping that's like reboot brand it. If it's a superhero, fine. As long as it's an interesting. Story. I, I got to be honest I with you. I think game, this gameplay it looked no more different to as I said, uh, Gotham Knights or um, yeah. Avengers. I, don't, I think it looked. The story looked cool. Mm. But it's fucking held back by being generic as balls. Yeah. I think that's, that's the, the thing, truth. and the, the, this is the crux of the matter, really, is that if they decided they were going to do a bunch more comics and a bunch more games, cool, do what you want. I would literally be the happiest person on earth if Marvel never released another fucking film again. <laughs> That's, I think, I think you're bringing across some other issues into this. It's yeah. just the films more than anything else. And, yeah, but then. And Suicide Squad. Makes... I don't want to say Suicide Squad is DC to so just shit all over what you've been saying. And them and all. To be fair though, as I said, I love Midnight Suns, but that's just because that's not really a superhero game. That's no, it's an XCOM game with a superhero skill. Yeah, it's a strategy game, isn't it? And it's fucking cool. I love it because it's not something that's commonly in yeah. the media in terms of the storyline. It plays completely differently. The storyline's crap. It's fine. The storyline is rubbish, but I think it's... the characters are rubbish. I think the storyline's kind of cool. The characters are I like the wooden. Idea. The characters are wooden. But also, I'm a complete hypocrite, by the way, because did I absolutely bore my eyes out in Avengers: Infinity War when I saw it? Of course you did. Yeah, yeah, I did. I sobbed. I sobbed. Yeah, but yeah, um, I agree. Anyway, that's a bit naff. Um, mm. But yeah, that's what's happening in, in gaming this month. So yeah, lots mm. of stuff. Mm. And I, there's a lot of other news that we haven't even touched on, like reworks, like different seasons for games and stuff like that, but we're not going to go into those. But those are like the main headlines we yes. saw wanted to bring up. Yeah. Anyway, so talking about the month and games that are generic and boring and why are we playing those? We've all been playing some games that came out. Actually, we're talking about games that have all come out within the last month from this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just about. <laughs> um, so as we're talking about generic and boring, does anyone want to jump in with their game? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll jump in. <laughs> Um, I think that's overly harsh, but I don't think it's too far from the truth. I, oh, I, played... I thought it might have been Keris. <laughs> yeah, I will, yeah. We'll loop around. Um, I played for Spoken, or as I keep calling it, for Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Just remove half the letters to entertain myself more than the game did. Sorry, can you say that again? <laughs> spoken. For Spooky. Uh, it's, it's about a person who has to say everything four times. <laughs> to be fair, you're not far off. Uh, that's all I've heard about those bad dialogues yeah it's not great um, yeah for Spoken the internet's favourite punching bag for the past like month and to be fair the three months before it it's, came out it's changed recently yeah uh, punching bag is now Atomic Hearts yeah what Keris is going to talk about yeah everything yes everyone's uh, angry about everything yeah for Spoken <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know what for Spoken is because I don't know if you've been off the internet for the past like three weeks um, it's about Frey you know, uh, you know, New York girl, uh, or you know, whatever you prefer, um, who then gets sucked through a magical portal to the world of Athia, uh, where a cuff with a very bad attitude um, gets attached to her wrist, and she has to go around and essentially save the world from the Tunters, who are like queens who have gone mad. And it is fine. Mm. Like, I think the internet has shit on it a lot because the dialogue is very. Uh, funny, we're talking about Marvel films. People keep comparing it to the Marvel dialogue. I get you. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think it's bad. I think it's clearly had some shit cut out. Like, I, uh, I was talking to Josh about this while I was playing it, and I hit a point where there's like a big fucking emotional blow up in the story, 
and a big event happened, which is kind of cool. And I went, I think I'm cresting like the midway point of this. I think we're about to get into something a bit heavier in the story. And I was on chapter mm-hmm. 11 of 12. And I'm like, oh, I'm at the end. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> because it felt like it was finally going somewhere. Mm. And I think that's the problem. I think the dialogue is it's Square a bit Enix. annoying. It's yeah. Square Enix. It's a bit annoying. I think it's fine. I don't understand why people hate the girl so much. I think the cuff is worse. Mm. Um, because I think she is at least like... Oh, I'm going to say something controversial. Okay. I, we all have to do. Do you want me to say why I think the internet don't like her? It's because the internet is inherently racist. Yeah, she's a black woman. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. And that's, that's, that's not controversial, that's a fact. That is, that is the truth of it. I think a lot of things get pushed. It's the same when... Um, People didn't like The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. And it wasn't because of the big scene. It was because how dare they have gays in well, here. Yeah. Gay women. Funny in enough here. to talk about The Last of Us in a way. Yeah. Um, I think that the internet has decided that gaming is the new bastion of high art. Yeah. And yeah. by that I mean any game that doesn't feature a sad beardy man as its protagonist is immediately slated as being cringy and yeah. uncool. Yeah. I'd rather... I don't hate her because at least she has a fucking personality. She's yeah. a bit annoying, but at least she is something. She's a character. She is a character, and it's fucking a breath of fresh air. Because yeah. She has character outside of I'm sad. Mm-hmm. She's like fucking, she's a terrible person, but that's fine. Because yeah. Because at least she is something. Yeah. Because the cuff is from a magical world, but talks like this generic sort of marvel dialogue, which doesn't fit. It fits yeah. for her, because I've heard real people talk like that. But he is this fantasy character that still talks like that. And there is a reveal about him later, which makes it even less fucking acceptable that he talks like that. Oh, so he comes from a different planet and has come there. Basically, yeah. What a fucking guest that was. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Oh my god. You, why do you talk like this? I mean, I wasn't expecting to put spoilers on here, but then I wasn't expecting to guess the game. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not that much of a spoiler. That's good. Cause that's basically, it's... That is said at the start, and then there is like a secondary Good. reveal in that essence. Yeah, yeah. But um, that comes <laughs> later on. And to be fair, got me. But I, it, I didn't see it come in. But in spite of the terrible dialogue, it's got a good open it's, world it's and it's got fun combat. The open world's a bit bland, yeah. but it's big. It's got a lot of like free running is a lot of the uh, main way of movement. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. The combat's fun. Going around collecting stuff's fun. There's an entire collectible part where you have to sneak up to cats and pet them. It's the best. Nice. And Very nice. I'm all about that. Your save points are little, like, um, cottages, essentially. And uh, every time you befriend one of the cats, they'll be in there. Oh, that's and one cool. of them's just, like, in the bedroom scratching the wall. One's Fuck on the it. chandelier. Two of them are, like, fighting Sold. over Sold. I want it. I, I, will, I will play a game it's just for that. got a lot of really cool, like, world-building stuff. I think it has... Uh, what I call the days gone problem. I said this to you. Yeah, is which... that it is a very long game that takes until about the halfway point to actually fucking get going. Yeah. And it's really cool once it gets there, but do you want to get there? I think it's a lot of people want, you, if you buy it immediately to get, so I'm, I'm a day gone's day one yeah. buyer, lover. I bought it. I loved it. And I very much, I bought into it immediately. Yeah. And I think mm. if there's certain, certain times for the majority, people will play it and they'll be like, <laughs> but then the, the, the diehard few that go, you know, that's for me. I haven't heard anyone say that about Forspoken, though. A lot of people, this is quite funny, I've seen. Anyone who has played it quite likes it. Yeah. But everyone who hasn't played it or just played the demo is everywhere going like, oh, shit, it's awful. And then you go, I said, they, uh, there's like a discussion thread about it. So I went, anyone who's actually played this, what do you think? And everyone's response is like, yeah, it's fun. So, right, someone called it a 10 out of 10, uh, put a podcast on and clean the map up game. Mm-hmm. Which is what it is, because the combat and the movement so much fun. Which is exactly how I like to play my games. <laughs> As I said, it's 12 chapters long, and at sort of the end of chapter 8, start chapter 9, it starts to get really interesting, because mm-hmm. it starts to like unfold the world, which is why it feels like shit was cut out. Right. It feels like there's about three chapters missing between 11 and 12, where the world was meant to unfold, and chapter 12 is fucking cool. Like, the end of the game... Does this feel like the beginning of a, what they wanted to be a beginning of a franchise? Yes and no. Uh, being a franchise like Horizon is, where it could be a solo game, but there's enough of a world that you could expand past it if people are excited by it. I'm going to say no. Okay. It just feels like it's got nowhere to go right, after right. it ends. It unfurls basically everything in chapters 11 right. and 12. And they are really cool because the way it unfolds and the story it has built mm. is fucking 
great. It's really good, but it takes so long to get there. Mm. And the story is so nothing up to that point, And the characters are not great. Right. There's a whole blow up where two characters fall out. And it feels like neither of them are right. They're both mm. just being dicks. The woman, <laughs> the woman and her cuff. I hate you, cuff. That's the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's a lot of fun to play. And the ending is genuinely great. But fuck, it takes a while to get there. Well, I look forward to installing that on my PlayStation as soon as I delete what it is that Keras has been playing this yep. month. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> I said, Kesha, <laughs> I think we've all been playing a bit. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and the game that I'm going to talk about this month is Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I want to start off with a disclaimer. First of all. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. The- um, I'm well aware of the controversy surrounding it. I think the controversy is absolutely valid. However, I am not personally going to touch on it. I think I would absolutely talk myself into a corner and just on the risk of offending anyone, saying the wrong thing, I'm I'm just I'm just not gonna touch it. No. Um I think we can all agree that JK Rowling is a fucking terrible person. Yeah. Um but I'm that's as far as I'm gonna go on it. Yeah. Uh, also my little sort of bit extra I want to say about it mm-hmm. is that we can all agree that she is a terrible person. Mm-hmm. But I also by all accounts, don't think the people at Avalanche who made the game are terrible, terrible people. people. No. And in a way, you can support one and not the other. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't want to talk about that stuff. It's a weird, it's a weird concept. Because she is a terrible person. Yeah. But I think Harry Potter f- was a great place for people who felt different to feel accepted yeah. when they read it as a kid. And I think that's what makes it so which sad. Makes it, which makes it yeah. so that's sad. what makes it so sad. And I think in the game, they have tried to show a level of acceptance of all people in there because they mm, really yeah. do include people from all walks of life in this yeah. game. That's I think J.K. Rowling has really marred her own creation. We do not agree with her. Yeah. yeah. And that's... And there are also that. other criticisms of the game that I'm not oh, yeah. going to go into, but I absolutely I, see yeah. where the points are coming from. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's as far as I'm going to go on it. That's... I, I just don't... I don't want to... I don't want to put us in a position I mean, yeah, this, where... The, the, and I will, I will argue certain points. Yeah, here. and I, <laughs> I, I feel like it's yeah. best not to get into those issues. Um, even... So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But the game itself, okay. No, the game is not, not hard. Um, no. I, uh, uh, do you know what? The thing about this was that, uh, as we How said... How do you feel as you started it? I think this is the way to do it. This How? is what I was going to say. Yeah. When I started it, from from the first time Josh showed me the trailer of it, I I love the world of Harry Potter. I I I feel very nostalgic with it. Um, I was so excited. Um, I thought it looked amazing. As I've started playing it, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Um, I am enjoying it for sure. However, I. I, I don't I don't really know how to how to put it. It's just it feels like the first it takes too long to come out of tutorial phase for one. So as somebody who I'm terrible, I need like a instant gratification <laughs> if I'm honest. I don't have a huge attention span for various reasons, jokes aside. Um this is something I actually find a little bit overwhelming as a game. So um as somebody who has legitimate ADHD tendencies um, diagnosed, yeah. this game is overwhelming to me to the point where there is so much to do. And I know it's open world and I'm not a huge open world fan. There's so much to do, but so it, it moves at quite a slow pace constantly. So unlike with things like um, God of War, for example, where there was tons of stuff to do, this stuff everywhere that you can... Uh, but th- the things that you do in this game, they take a long time. They're quite slow-paced. And there's so much of it that as a person, I find it sometimes overwhelming to even open the game. I've, yeah. The game itself, <laughs> say, I agree, is an overwhelming... Mm. Because I do a lot of open worlds. Um, yeah. Lot of, which is not something you necessarily yeah. do a lot of. So I, it's not me to step in here. But like... I do find that I was like, oh my god, there is thousands and thousands. I mean, collectibles in the game, there's 1,257 yeah. mm-hmm. collectibles that you have to collect to platinum it. Yeah. 
the issue with every game that you play up until this point, open world, you play a game, you've got your main story quest. If you see side quests, you deal with the side quests first. But they give you side quests that are too high a level, move around it. What you need to do in this game, and I say this now playing it, and I think I'm probably the furthest out of the three of us now. Yeah. Is you just play the main story. Play the main story, and then once that's finished, go do everything else. Yeah. And that's the way to do it, I think, because... I, I went in there and I was like, oh, great, everything is fucking locked. Every single item is locked. Mm. Great, you get this thing. I can unlock level one spells, then level two, yeah. level three. Oh, you need to do these things. Oh, you need certain grass for that. You need to be able to grow that grass, but you can't undo that until you've done... Yeah. If you do the main story, you're able to essentially start unlocking everything. Yeah. So you have to blast through the main story. There's yeah. another game like this. I can't think what game it is off the top of my head. But um, it feels like the main story is the tutorial for the yeah. open world. Yeah. It. It's not like a game with an open world. It's an open world with a game. Yeah. And that game is the tutorial to then go around and yeah. explore. And I'll be honest with you, for myself, um, there's part of that I really like because I am somebody who tends to, be, because of my attention span problems forget controls quite easily so the fact that i can go back in and remember where everything is or i'm constantly reminded is great um however i just this part of it i find really boring and i struggle with that because i was so excited to play it i think overall like i'm enjoying the game i wouldn't say i'm disappointed by it i'm enjoying it it's good to chill out to it's um it's something that i continuously go back to so it's not a problem however um there are various things about it that i'm just like like i know you'll agree with me the voice acting oh. is a Abysmal! It is exactly. so bad. I can't believe that they let me do that. Why are they all like, oh, I'm a rich kid? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, very that. Oh, it's it's, in the olden times. But it's it's just it's yeah. an but insufferable. Your best is, it sounds awful, but your best friend's a black girl who's allowed out in public. Yeah, and that's and it sounds awfully saying that. That's a controversial thing to say, but they're like, oh no, they are all accepting you. Know, this guy doesn't really know, well, whoever you are, this comes from a place of no magic, and suddenly they've gone from like 18th, 17th century England, or, or yeah, thrown, in, thrown into a castle with a bunch of people from different backgrounds. Like, oh no, I'm very accepting, honestly. Yeah. You look just like my maid. You know, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, how it yeah, yeah. It yeah. just feels the, a little off. The thing about this game, and this is a really <laughs> weird take on it, I wish it was structured differently. Yes. And I wish it was structured, and it's a complete transition an idea to something like a persona where mm. every few days it's like split up into your days and every like few weeks or so mm. you had a big event big event happen yeah and between that you had like your options of classes where you mm. then unlock certain spells yeah and you had options to like free roam yeah because it feels like it's too as you say, it's overwhelming. It's too much. Yeah. Like, there doesn't feel like any incentive it's to too do much specific no direction. things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at one point, like, I got really, like, oh, really? Because you're waiting for Professor Fink to come back. And it's literally like, just live as a student for a few days. And it's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do mean? with that? What does that mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, it's... Have to do some side quests. It's, um... It had a bit more of, like, you wake up, you pick a class to go to. You yeah. Go a bit, you yeah. Yeah. Like the classes are boring as well. They go, oh, you've done your assignment. Here's a class. It's like you just see a cutscene of them fucking about in a class and they go, now learn your spell. Now go away. I do like Wizard Balls, though. Oh, I do. No, like Wizard Balls is great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, uh, my sister, I think, actually made a really good point. They made this game with no idea who their demographic they were aiming for yeah. was. Yeah. Is it the people who love the films? Is it the people who love the books? Is it people who aren't gamers? Is it gamers yeah. exclusively? Everything. It's, oh, we'll put in a little bit of everything so everyone's happy and instead everyone feels unsatisfied. Yeah. It has Pokemon in it. It does have Pokemon. I have found a shiny uh, puff scheme. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and I think, I think as well, like, this is going to sound really childish, okay? But the way that it was sold to me, and I know I put up a reel about this a little while ago, was that you had a choice. You could either go down a path where, you know, your average Harry Potter path, you, you yeah. were, or you go down the side where you're literally abracadabra and abracadabra and students, and you could go down the like dark side. <laughs> now, I was very interested because with all, you know, we've had the books, we've had the films. We, I was interested in seeking out what it would be like to explore that dark side of that yeah. world. 
you aren't given the option to do that. I don't know why it was sold to people that this is so open world that you can make a decision either way, no. and that's not the case. It's a bad service, but it doesn't change anything. No. Honestly, you can go, literally, they give you the option of going, oh, I'd love to learn that spell, or I probably shouldn't learn that spell, and then you learn the spell for done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. well, I could enjoy using Crucio on you, or I enjoyed using Crucio, well, you're a naughty boy then, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> this could have been really, really... Um, interesting in concept if you were given more of that but you're just not you are oh it's open wheel but you're forced down a certain path yeah. and the sad thing about this is i think that i'm actually enjoying the content the stupid content like um people listening to this probably know what i'm talking about as well in that uh, like on tiktok at the moment you've got like the hogwarts house parties tiktoks where it's like literally like slytherin and ravenclaw like, having a rave and like it's it, it's it's just stupid stuff uh, like that and i yeah and i'm enjoying that content and seeing people my age enjoy that more than i am the game right now i'm skipping through dialogue but it's just a bit bland there's yeah. always really the biggest problem with it. Outside of talking to Deke, I don't really want to talk to anyone else. I love Deke. Deke, my house elf. Well, he's not my house elf, but he's a house elf I hang out yeah. with. Yeah. I like Deke. Everyone else, don't get around. The only other person that I um, like to hang out with is my Sebastian boyfriend, Sebastian. <laughs> he's, he's an ass. <laughs> But um, in short, outside of that, though, I think it's quite a nice, like, it's a good, it's a good looking open world. There's a lot of nice mm. things there. I think they've made the groundwork of something that could be good in the future. Yeah. And it's selling like fucking wildfire. It is. Hotcakes. Don't you sell wildfire? Can you sell wildfire? wildfire. Um, but everyone's <laughs> buying it. I think it was 12 million physical yeah, copies sold in two weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, so everyone's buying it. There's going to be more like this, regardless of yeah. people's views on it. Uh, and hopefully they hone it in. Avalanche, you made this. Are they the same people who made Mad Max? I think so. Yeah. And that's why there's no more Mad Max because of this. <laughs> Mad Max is a great game. Mad Max is a great game. Really good. Mm. But yeah, um, I've also been playing a game that's come out yeah. um, that was made uh, as a remaster. I forgot what you've been playing. <laughs> Dead Space. I've been playing the Dead Space remaster, um, which is just a remake of the classic for PS3 uh, where you follow Isaac Clarke uh, star of uh, episode one yes yes, yes. Um, who yeah Isaac Clarke engineer who goes around and basically tries to save the ship and the people on it and yeah. find and reunite with his wife um, it's a very good remaster I will say that it's a very good remaster um, it feels good. It looks great. If you love Dead Space, you'll love this. Uh, my only, my, it's, it's strange with it. My qualm with it is the fact that because I know what Dead Space is, I haven't, ha- I didn't have a genuine jump really yeah. in mm. this game. Um, and more controversial, I say I got more scared playing Callisto Protocol, but I think that was because it was a new story, really, yeah. mm. and I think Callisto actually looks nicer than the Dead okay. Space one. That's mm-hmm. in my opinion, but that's because they focus more on the cinema cinematics of it all and they had motion cap so like Callisto had those bits because they had it was Josh Duhamel was like the lead in that was this is just graphics done it doesn't feel like it's anyone actually doing Mm. it yeah but outside of that though it still looks really nice I've done one run through on normal difficulty collecting everything and killing everything with a plasma cutter cool so I've done those because there's a bunch of trophies I'm going to win next time and I'm going to do it with all of the different guns. I think it's a brilliant game. I mean, there's not much to talk about Dead Space. It sounds stupid. It's still Dead Space. It's still Dead Space. It's still worth playing. It's still a great game. Um, would I say it's worth the £60 price tag because it's a remaster? Probably not. I'd rather it's a little mm. cheaper. But it's yeah. still a beautiful game. I think out of the three games that we've discussed, it's probably the one most deserving of the price tag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think it's a, re- it's a really solid. I mean... Yeah. If you like the first one, there's some slight changes, but really it's it's like the Peng thing was moved. You have to follow a bit more to find the Peng statue, but it's like little yeah. bits in there. The story is the same beats, though. So it's exactly yeah. the same what you're expecting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, get onto Dead Space if you like Dead cool. Space. If you're like, mm, I'm not sure. That's it. The only thing is a bit light. Okay. It, like, I expect it to be darker in there. I think they've... Mm. Um, I mean, I can, you can change your brightness yourself. They kind of like something. But I did... What, <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. I did what it'd sell me to do with the brightness, and then I, I played it. Too, so. cool. I just I just felt it was a little too bright in there. It's mm. probably spooky. Yeah. Oh, well, I can imagine, right? There's times where I come home from work, and Josh works from home, right? And he will be in here working with no lights on, and I literally come in and like hammer the lights on. I'm like, why are you living like this? This is depressing. That's what I imagine that they've done in Dead Space. 
Yeah, the Zelda Morphs like. That's it, like. <laughs> also, I don't know how the ship knows exactly where I am uh, every time to have a fucking power failure in that one room with all the xenomorphs. Necromorphs. Necromorphs, not xenomorphs. Yes. Oh my actually. god, that'd be worse! Yes. Yes. Did you come across um, from episode one, my play the game, the spider that belly point. woman? I must have done. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's not an extreme enough reaction yeah. for that I, absolute. I didn't. I mean, me and Darren both, when you were streaming, was it you streaming it? Yeah. yeah. It was like, well, this is gross. I didn't have that feeling in this game at all. And this is where we find out. Josh is a little bit of a psychopath. He doesn't do <laughs> emotions or fear. Um, so fear. that's the I reason do. why I have to have the extreme emotions on the st- on streams for both of us. <laughs> so. you know what else we have emotions towards? PlayStation Plus. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well done, We did so well on the segways. Well, you guys are doing well on the segways. So, uh, <laughs> PS Plus February. First thing, good or bad? Good. This is really a very good, good month. I mean, really good. There's nothing to say about it. This might be one of the best months they've done in a long time. Probably mm-hmm. the best overall. I think it probably is the, the best. I mean, just the total content in there. They've got, was it... 20 games they've released this month. Yeah. Um, and most of them, yeah. And most of them are great. Um, so what we're going to do first is going to... We're not going to do a full rundown of all of them because there's a lot there. No. But we'll move to each person championing or is it the top five first? I can't remember. Uh, each person we'll, championing. Each person yeah. championing. Uh, does anyone want to go first with their game? Oh, Because no. I know Darren's is not the one we were expecting. No. <laughs> uh, so when the... Monthly, the essential games were announced. One of them was Oli Oli World. And I went, well, fuck, I know what I'm championing. And then the extra slash premium games came out. And I looked at it and went, you know what? Oli Oli World's great. And mm-hmm. I love it. I've, I've talked about Oli Oli World before. Everyone knows I love it. Everyone yeah. It's great. I want to champion a game that's perhaps lesser known, mm-hmm. but is still worth talking about, which yeah. is a game called The Forgotten City, uh, which is a game that started life as a Skyrim mod. And then was all expanded okay. into a full game. And basically the concept is you are dropped into a ancient Roman city, which is underground. And it is the city that lives on one rule, which is don't do a crime. And if you do a crime, um, all the gold statues in the city come to life, turn everyone to gold, and life ends. Uh, the way you get around this is at the top of a hill is a portal. And if you go through the portal, it begins again. The day starts again. And so you land there, and the whole idea is working out A, what the fuck is going on, and B, how do I get the fuck out of here? And how that works is you essentially just go around, you talk to people, and you work through their problems, their lives, all that's going on. But what I like about it is it makes a really cool use of its time loop mechanic. Mm -hmm. So literally the first thing you do in the game is you... Well, the very first thing you do is you come out and the guy meets you and goes, who the fuck are you? How did you get here? Let's go talk to our emperor man uh, because he's going to want to know why you're here. So when you come through in the next loop, he goes, what the fuck are you doing here? And you go, shush and leave <laughs> because you've heard it all before. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, um, That's really like, good. The other bit is you come in and you need to talk to a woman who's dying. She's been poisoned. The only antidote to the poison is being sold by an asshole vendor who is selling it for far too high a price. Mm. So what you do is you steal it, which is, of course, a crime. crime. Yeah. So all the statues come to life, start killing everyone. You go through the portal. You are now back at the start of the day. But you have you the antidote. Yeah, yeah. okay. So you go straight to her and give it to her. That's cool. Or, like, um, there's an assassin you find. And a woman comes out. She's screaming at the assassin. She runs into a temple and it collapses on her. So in the next loop, the assassin goes, where is the emperor? And you go, oh, he's in that temple. And he runs into the temple and it falls in and he dies. Yeah. And you've resolved the problem. Yeah, that's but yeah. if you admit to anyone that you knew the temple was going to collapse, you have then murdered him and the statues come to life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that is that. a really cool concept. I love that. And it's a lot of like looping round. You can fuck up dialogue and then you have to start the loop again and you know not to it's, say Yeah, it's like, it's like an expansion of... There's loads of games like that, Minute and things like that, which are almost... It's roguelike, essentially, yeah. isn't it? But mm. it's more knowledge gathering yeah, rather you than... You learn something skills. every loop or you gain a new item every yeah. loop. Yeah. It's a little bit um, butterfly effect-esque. Um, it then means yeah. you don't have to do that bit of the loop again. It's mm. like the whole area yeah. where you get a bow that turns people to gold. And then you don't have to do that section again the yeah. next time mm. you have the bow. That makes sense. That's really cool. It's a really cool game. A really cool concept. Um, the best ending is fucking wild. It takes <laughs> so long to get to it, and it's insane. I can't wait. In the best way. 
Um, it's one of the games that I, I remember being it being shown um, on PC and it's like oh I, I want to give that a go and then I saw it came here I was like oh interesting now it's free I'm like brilliant yeah. <laughs> I don't have to spend the 15 quid or whatever it was for it and I yeah. can just, I can just yeah. get the game so I'm very excited about yeah. it um, so you have a minute to talk about yours because you've talked about it too much over the course of the rest of the episodes yeah okay so I did precisely the opposite of Darren um, where we said uh, oh we've talked about this uh, don't you dare put a timer on me because I'm not going to stick to a minute I think we've established at the beginning of this episode that I might have ADHD That's a lot of so use. you've wasted a lot of time yeah okay well I'm going to talk anyway try and stop me what the fuck are you going to do about it mute your mic fine do it I'm going to talk about it and then I'm going to be picked up on your mic so Cut fuck the whole you episode into the sun. Um, in fuck any yeah. case um, I obviously championed um, Resident Evil Evil 7 Biohazard which I'm not going to talk about for too long because um, it's in the last episode um, but just a little recap for anybody who didn't listen to the last episode and, and has not played the game um, Resident Evil 7 is interesting because it is kind of largely touted as um, the game that kind of saved the franchise so if you are not aware 5 and 6 weren't received very well um, it was seen as being too actiony. It was seen as, you know, being in, in, even in the scale of Resident Evil being really, really far fetched. The cause the plots were too complicated. There was a lot going on in five and six. And then for seven, they decided to, um, scale it right back, reboot the franchise and focus on, uh, first person horror. It's the first game in the franchise that's done first person. Um, and I think for the better, controversially. Um, but I do think it's for this particular storyline, it works. Um, essentially what happens is we have a new protagonist. His name is Ethan Winters and he goes to find his wife who has been missing for three years. And she has sent him an email, um, uh, uh, basically from a, uh, farm in Dulvey, Louisiana. And he basically goes thinking that he's just going to be able to pick them up. Now, this obviously is the first, um, kind of inkling we get that this man is insane because who does that um but when he gets there essentially he is met and kidnapped essentially um by a family who have um been infected uh with a disease I'm, spoil that too much. I'm not gonna spoil too much <laughs> Oh, come on. I was just, I'm making a joke because we talked about this, the, the, the infection last, last episode. So it's not a story, I, but this is for people who might not have listened to the last episode. Oh, fuck them. <laughs> also, Wait. the game's been out for how long now? Five years? Uh, no. Six yeah, years? they've been infected, they, they've been infected by a mold that makes them, um, homicidal, crazy, um, and he basically just has to try and get out and it takes him ages. Um, this game is fucking great and it's so scary and it's the story is awesome and i just i just love it i think it was a really good way to reboot the franchise um the cool thing about seven and eight um is that they do cycle through different horror genres Mm -hmm. um this looks more at your kind of modern horror you get a bit of fan footage in there you get like hillbilly family it's very hills have ice slash Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's also some Lovecraftian stuff in there. Um, it's a real good mix. Um, even though Love- Lovecraftian isn't modern horror, I know, but um, and Hills of Ice and uh, thing is seventies. Lovecraftian, is it? like yeah, uh, but that still counts as modern horror. horror. I mean, like it's, it's a nice like yeah, it's a, it's a fray through. All because the when you get to eight, they do the same thing, but they do it with more your um eighteen hundreds, early nineteen yeah, hundreds um gothic so. horror where they look at vampires, werewolves, um mermen. Uh, with in like guns. I hope they bring eight out on here at some point soon as well. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I, that's as much as I'm going to say about it. It's just a fucking good game, and if you've not played it, you should you should do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, it's mine. I really struggled to work out what game to champion. I assumed Darren was going to do Ollie Ollie World, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, it is a great game, though. Great game. I'm going to talk about Horizon Forbidden West. It's mm-hmm. not the one I would have necessarily picked out. It's not the one that I was excited when it got announced because I've already played it. It's, yeah. just, it's a weird thing. You know, there's a lot of... The number six game of 2022. Yes. Um, it might be lower now. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a really, it is a really good game. So I think it's worth playing if you've not actually had an opportunity to play a big open world game. I think this is an ideal started to that open world clear the map sort of thing um, obviously the first one is a better place to start but you don't need the first one to have played this one because it does a nice recap at the beginning for mm. you if you haven't played it to give you an idea you are a woman in the a desolate future 
and there's technology in the past which you have access to, so you're a little bit further ahead. And then there are mechanical creatures that you fight. But yeah, so it's a story of Aloy again making her way through this world, uncovering the past. Like Aloy, you get it? <laughs> Resolving the future. You know, standard hero stuff. And it's a woman, and people aren't angry at her, which is good, because the internet should be, because she's a woman lead. No, especially the redhead, so it's fine. Yeah, it is fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Um, although I don't like the voice actress, she annoys me in other things. But she's good in this. <laughs> she's on. I, it, um, was it Mythic Quest? Yeah. She's, she's one of the characters in that. So it's Ashley, Ashley Burt? Yeah. But I don't like her in Mythic Quest. She's, um, she's in Borderlands as well, I think. She's a Tony I, Tina in Borderlands. But, but I don't like Borderlands. I love Borderlands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care much Tony Tina, but Borderlands is great. Well, I say that we call that. But anyway, uh, for Fred and West, great open world game visually beautiful. I, I don't think there's many games that look better than that, or if there are, it's a visual sort of smorgasbord of interesting things to look at. Good word. Yes. Um, it, it's just, and it's crazy that it's such a small team compared to these huge developers that make generic, boring, brown things. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God, Keris. <laughs> I was quiet during yours. Um, You're never quiet during mine. Fuck off. But yeah, for Horizon Forbidden West, um, if you haven't had the opportunity, it's one of the, like, the new flagship games for PlayStation. It's a superb game. Give it a game. Really Give it a go. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. But with that in mind, what are our top five? All the ones who championed are in our top five. Ooh. So uh, coming in at number five is something we haven't discussed, is a PS1 classic. Yeah. It's Harvest Moon Back to Nature. This is the kind of shit I love on the PS Plus catalog. <laughs> it's perfect PS Plus. <laughs> they go, yeah, fucking Horizon. Uh, what's another one? Fucking like Borderlands 3, the quarry, etc., etc. And then right at the bottom, they go, yeah, fucking Harvest Moon. <laughs> go on. Like, I mean, yeah. between that and The Legend of Dragoon, oh, there is people some... are fucking hyped for Legend of Dragoon. Yeah, and rightly so. But it's like a nice, interesting PS1 throwback. But number five for us is Harvest oh, Moon. Um, so good. Then number four, we uh, put in, he says, trying to remember which one it was because it's completely slipped his yeah, mind. Forgot to say it was number four. Yeah, that was, that was the joke. Got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. it's a city. Yeah, the Forgotten <laughs> City um, is at number four, which Darren's just discussed. Um, yeah. Is an uh, interesting game to go for. Number three, we have Horizon Forbidden West, which was the one I briefly discussed, but you know what we are. If you want to hear more about it, go back to our Game of the Year episode. Yeah. Um, number two comes in at Oli Oli World, which we've all sort of given really high marks. Also go back to the Game of the Year episode. Yeah, which is discussed. Yeah. Um, Darren loves it. I'm also a big fan of it now. Uh, and now Karis has a, go, has a chance to have a go at it. Which would be good. You'll get mad. Mm. Um, and then <laughs> number one, unsurprisingly, is Resi 7. Um, it's something that sort of revitalized the horror genre and I think is a step in the right direction uh, for the franchise. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're all quite quite a variety of games yeah. in our top fives and mm -hmm. I think you should give them all yeah. a good oh, yeah. shake of the stick. Yeah. mention as well that there was, um, there was a brief discussion about whether we were going to do Harvest Moon or The Quarry. Um, another really good game that we do also talk about in, in game our yeah. uh, Game of the Year. Um, yeah episode yeah. so check that out if you want there to were a lot, I'm not going to notice some other notable mentions because there are no. all the games pretty much all the games I think are good games it's just a good month I'll, I'll do one more honorable mention just because we talked about it way way back uh, in our very first episode I talked about playing the Scarlet Nexus demo mm. Scarlet, uh, Scarlet Nexus is now on the catalogue is it good who knows it's the, one, <laughs> it's, the one, it's the game I was most excited to see I, I described mm. myself in the demo as whelmed and I've read a lot of feedback on the game and apparently that's the general vibe mm. it's, well. it's, it's, it's fine Cool. Um, but that's February for us. So that was everything that happened in February. What we've been playing, what's going on, what we suggest you play. Before we go, though, one, one prediction for this Pokemon Direct from each person. <gasps> um, because this will come out the day after it's announced and we can see how wrong we were. Um, I'm going to move to Keris first for a prediction. Oh, my God. Um, I... I've got to be honest, I don't know too much about it, but after the, um, when I streamed Pokemon on Friday and there was a bit of discussion about this, I think that it might be what, and I'm sorry if I'm stealing yours, Darren, um, but I think that you were probably spot on with the Coliseum. Oh, I'd love it. Being love announced. It so much. So you think they're going to announce a new Coliseum or a remake? I think it'll be a remake. Remake but... of Coliseum from Keras. Mm -hmm. Darren? Uh, can I make a serious one and a joke one? Go for it. My serious one is I think they'll do DLC, Scarlet and Violet, in the same way they did the DLC for Sword and Shield. Ooh! Uh, my other one is Pokemon Channel 2. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what Pokemon Channel is? No! It's a GameCube game where you watch uh, TV with your Pikachu. Oh! 
to play the shit out of that. It's a fucking weird ass game. Genuinely great. Um, I'm going to go out there and say there's going to be a new mystery dungeon announced. I'd love that. Which oh, I don't know if that is going to be the case. Um, but that's going to be my that's my serious one. Um, and my joke one is going to be that they are now going to be merchandising hats exclusively for all oh, the new please. gen Pokemon for you to buy. <laughs> that's oh, what I want. I want, the new gen one. I want um... Oh no, I think it's only going to be new gen exclusively. They only do it from this <laughs> generation. Actually, actually, add another one. Uh, they'll real they'll make for real to merchandise the Eevee backpack from uh, oh my god please now because the amount of money I would drop on the backpack it's because when you said hats I was thinking like when I get the Eevee hat that has the little ears on it no, that's going to make the backpack. Oh my god! Brilliant. Um, but that's another episode. So thank you all for coming along. Make sure you do check us out on our socials, which is at Discount Pod. That's two C's, and then we all have our own individual ones, which is Discount Darren, Discount Josh, Discount Keris. Darren's got two R's in it before he makes yeah. the joke. Um, that's one. Uh, I do. <laughs> I'm online. <laughs> We are also on uh, YouTube. We're also on every streaming platform. So if this is YouTube you're watching this on, check us out on our streaming platforms for podcasts. And we also have a Twitch, which is, again, Discount Pod, where we stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Mondays and uh, Fridays are our legacy games. Wednesdays are our episode games. So do check them out. They are slowly going to be coming onto YouTube as well. So thank you all for being there. That was a very quick ending, um, just because I know how long we've been recording this for a lot less longer than we wanted to. Um, but thank you all for being here. Thank you for being our player fours. And we'll catch you all next time. Bye! Bye.